Hey Gecko fans, this is Wally with Supreme Gecko. Now a couple of weeks ago I received a couple of messages from some good friends asking me if they would price their Cresta Geckos or how do you price a Cresta Gecko. Now I love answering questions like this. I love helping the fellow hobbyists. But for these questions, I said... Not gonna do it. Wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. Why not? Why wouldn't I answer those questions? Well, I'm going to tell you why. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how you can price your own crested geckos. When you're selling crested geckos, or really any animal for that matter, it's really important to come up with a fair, equitable price. You may or may not be in business, but coming up with that price is so important. And of course, the more you make on your crested geckos, the more you can go out and buy more. When you ask me to price your Cresta Geckos or confirm on a price, I'm really honored. I feel you're coming to me to just get that thumbs up on that price or to give you a quick price. And I feel most of you really understand when I come back to you and say that I just won't do that price estimate. But I will help you in another way. Did you know that the interest and excitement over Cresta Geckos has grown substantially in the last couple of years? Let's go ahead and take a look at this study done by Tenny's. Crested geckos, look at that spike in popularity of crested geckos in the last couple of years. And the price? It's followed that trend. There are many, many factors or variables that go into making up the price of crested geckos. And in this video, you're going to hear a lot of those and you're going to go, yeah, I kind of knew that. But before this video, you probably weren't thinking of all the variables and factors. These factors could change the price from 10 to 20 up to 80% of the value of that crusted gecko. Now, a lot of these factors are very, very important, and I'm going to talk about them in this video. Make sure that you watch the whole video because some of these factors or variables are very significant in determining the price of your crusted gecko. Some of the more important points are going to be at the end of this video too. And as I said, this process can be used for crusted geckos or leopard geckos or bearded dragons etc 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 okay real quick let's take a look at this crested gecko how much should this crested gecko be priced at do you know comment down below and i'll tell you at the end of this video what i feel this crested gecko should be priced at since i'm going to be difficult and not give you a price for your crested geckos let me tell you there's three different ways you can get your price the first is phone a friend. If you do ask a friend, remember what I always say, ask three experts. But don't ask me because I'm not going to pick up that phone call. I just don't price animals and let me tell you why I don't price animals. If I price your animal and it's too low of a price and you sell that animal immediately, you might feel that that price was a little bit too low and that you could have sold the animal for more money. If I price the animal too high, you could be holding on to that animal for months and months. Also, and again, there's just so many variables and factors that go into pricing crusty geckos. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Second, you can ask social media. There's actually a Facebook group called What's My Gecko Worth? And here's my thought on that group. Big mistake. Big. Huge. Big mistake. And again, that's because there's just too many variables to be put into a post to find out what the price, the accurate price of a gecko could be. And second of all, usually the first person that posts, everybody else kind of falls in line with that post. They don't want to be too far off from that first estimate. And also, if you get prices off of what's my gecko worth, go ahead to the market and try to get the value that's estimated in that post. And the third and best way that you can price your animals is do it yourself. First, it really forces you to learn a lot about crusted geckos. Their morphs, their traits, their features, their patterns. You really need to know everything about crusted geckos and you really need to know everything about your animal. You need to know that information backwards and forwards. Next, as you do more research, you get more experience. You get more comfortable with the whole process. You become the crusted gecko expert. Next, you get to learn a little bit about your competition. I cannot tell you how important this is when you're pricing your geckos today and moving forward. And finally, if you decide to price your own geckos, here's the key. Practice, 
practice, practice, practice. Go to reptile shows. Go up to a table that's selling crusty geckos and ask the breeder, why do you price your animal this way? Why is this animal different? Get that experience from a good breeder. Ah, so you're still here. Well, that means that you really want to learn how to price your crusty geckos correctly. Well, let's get to work. This is the part where I'm supposed to roll up my sleeves, but I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. Step one, know your stuff. Know your gecko. You need to correctly classify that gecko. And these are the factors and the variables that I talked about before in the video. First off, traits and morphs. Now there's a lot of great information out on the internet. A lot of great articles, a lot of great videos. Here's one that you really, really need to watch, and this is from Pangea. So let me ask you this. Do you know the difference between Dalmatians and a Super Dalmatian, a Harley, and an Extreme Harley? How about a Tricolor? Do you know what portals are? How about ink spots? Or soft scales? Or the difference between Brindle and Tigers? Or the difference between a Pinstripe a partial pinstripe, and a reverse stripe. You better know this stuff. Next is age, and this is a pretty simple one. Make sure that you record everything about that crested gecko. The egg lay date, the hatch date, you can even record weights during its lifespan. But most importantly is that hatch date because you will be asked for a hatch date. Gender. Did you know that you can start checking gender of crested geckos at four, five, six, seven months of age? To help you with this process, make sure that you go out on Amazon and get a good loop. There's a link in the description down below. And to help you with this, Guardians of the Gecko has a really super good video that can show you how to set your geckos. Next is bloodlines. And I'm telling you, these days, bloodlines are so critical in selling crested geckos. Bloodlines means keeping track of the parents, the mom, the dad, the grandmother, the grandfather, going back three, four, five generations. You can keep all of this information on an index card or you can put it into a spreadsheet. If you buy a crested gecko, make sure that you ask the breeder for this information as well. Get as much information as you possibly can get on the crested gecko. Next is health. And this seems pretty obvious, but make sure that you have a healthy gecko to sell. Do not sell a gecko that has any health issues whatsoever. That includes MBD or any kind of a shed issue. And if you have a female that you feel is gravid, don't put that girl on the market to sell. It just it adds a lot of stress to that crested gecko. Here's step two on how you can determine the price of your crested geckos. Research, find similarly priced geckos. Now that you know everything about your crested gecko and everything about crested geckos in general, let's talk about researching price. Here's an example. Let's say that you have a baseball card and you want to get it evaluated. What do you do? Well, there's two things that you need to do. First is to get it graded. Usually the perfect baseball card is graded as a 10 and that really boosts up the value of that card. Next, take the information about that baseball card, including the grading, and go to an app or go to a website that will tell you the prices of those baseball cards. Or at least what it's sold for recently at that grade, let's say on eBay. But there's no apps for Crested Gecko valuations. However, there are sites that will tell you what Crested Geckos have been sold for recently. You know all about Crested Geckos, you know all about your specific Crested Gecko. Let's go to one of those sites and find out exactly what you should price your Crested Gecko at. Well, it's not really that easy, but it's a starting point. As you probably already know, you can't sell animals on most social media sites. That's a big no-no, and it could get you banned. What's the alternative? There have been many, many attempts to create sites to help people sell their animals. Now, a lot of these have just fallen by the wayside and failed because they don't have the buy-in from a lot of the general hobby. There are two sites that are king of crested gecko pricing. The first one is Fauna Classified. Did you know about this site? Comment down below if you did. The second is Morph Market. These are the best of the best to help you price your crested geckos. Are there any others? Are there any sites better than these two? Leave a comment down below. Again, by now you know crested geckos, you know your crested gecko, but before we can go to those sites, 
and find a comparable Krusty Gecko to do your pricing, there's a couple of gotchas out there. And these are things that most people don't think about. The first is age. Generally speaking, young Krusty Geckos are priced less than adult Krusty Geckos. Let's head back to that study that was done by Tenny's Krusty Geckos and take a look at a graph. Juveniles in blue generally have a lower price than adults. Here's another got you. When you're comparing prices of adults, make sure that you're not comparing prices to older crusted geckos that are past their prime. Once a crusted gecko gets to be about 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, that price will considerably drop. And speaking of age, don't sell a crusted gecko too young. I consider two months to be the right age to start selling crusted geckos. Before that, they're just too tiny. Let's talk about gender. Now, you know that you can keep one male to several females for crusted geckos. And as well, several females can be kept together in the same enclosure. Now, I'm not saying that you should cohabitate. I'm just saying that possibly you can. Let's go back to another chart from Tenny's Crusted Geckos and compare prices on males and females. See how the gap in price between females and males decreases as we move down the chart to newer, rarer traits or morphs? This is due to the fact that breeders are looking for one good male to pass on that trait, that morph, to their current collection of females. Here's the big one, traits and morphs. Let's go back to morph market. Take a look at this chart. Over 60 different morphs. 60. What did I say? No, your crusted gecko and note the crusted gecko morphs and traits so that you can compare equitably. If you don't know the morphs and traits, make sure that you ask around and get definitive definitions on these morphs and traits. Now, let's talk about some factors or variables that a lot of people don't consider when they're pricing their geckos. Let's talk about special features. Now, some special features are good and some aren't so good. And more importantly, some keepers really care about these special features. Some just don't care at all. The fact that a crested gecko has a tail or not doesn't impact its ability to breed, but some people feel that that's a big stopping point and decrease the price that they would pay for a crested gecko without a tail. Head structure. Some people really like those big, full heads on crested geckos. I call this the flying nun crested gecko. Okay, nobody's going to get that reference. Furry or furred. It's kind of like the head structure, but the crests are actually extended. And finally, Dalmatians. You either love, love seeing a crusted gecko with a lot of Dalmatians, or you just hate Dalmatians altogether. Personally, I love seeing super Dalmatians. I think that's one of the rare geckos in the hobby. One of the biggest factors in determining the price of a crusted gecko is absolutely the experience or how big a breeder is. It really doesn't seem fair, but it is reality. Some big breeders like LAC Herp, Altitude Exotics, Flawless Crusted Gecko have a long reputation to uphold and more importantly, really know their stuff. They can price their Crusted Geckos just a little bit higher justifiably. Not like Joe's gas station and Crusted Gecko breeding facility. Here's a factor that we rarely see, but it does have an impact on Crusted Gecko prices when we see it and that is sourcing. If that animal is from the wild, or is an F1, the baby of a wild animal, the price will rise significantly. People are looking for new bloods in crusted geckos. Another huge factor in determining the price of a crusted gecko is the pictures. When you show off a crusted gecko and you set a price, it's so important to have a crisp, great looking picture of that crusted gecko. But make sure that you don't doctor up that picture because people will see the difference. If you can include pictures of the parents or the grandparents, that's even better. Check out these two photos. Which of the two photos would draw your attention? And when you're taking pictures, make sure that you focus on the eye of the gecko. Get the whole body in the frame, but make sure that eye is absolutely focused. You absolutely have to have one picture of the animal, but if you can get a picture from the side and from the top and from the other side, that's even better. Here's another factor. What outlet are you using to sell your animals? Is it online? 
Is it at a reptile show? Are you going to a pet store? Because all of those could impact the price that you put on your crusted geckos. And when I say online, I mean either your own store or one of the social media sites. Now, I said earlier, don't sell on social media, but there is kind of a way to do that. That might be a video that I do in the future. What outlet you use will make a big difference in the price that you establish for your crusted gecko. Let's take reptile shows, for example. If you go to a reptile show and there's 20 other tables selling crusted geckos, you can anticipate your price to be lower than what you would put online to sell your crusted gecko. And the price of that crusted gecko might be different between the time that the show opens and the time that that show ends. If you're taking your crusted geckos to a pet store, which is a great outlet to sell your crusted geckos to, you can anticipate a price drop probably about 50% of what you expect to sell online or at reptile shows. Timing's a big factor. Fall, winter, spring, summer, it all matters when you place your animals on the market. And that price is going to be impacted at certain events, such as after a big reptile show, or when another breeder places a lot of animals online, or especially tax season. Here's a factor that a lot of people will say is an important factor in pricing crusted geckos, but I don't feel it's that important. Whether or not that gecko is proven. Being proven means that that crusted gecko has had babies. Some people feel that a proven male or female crusted gecko is valued more. Generally speaking, I consider all male crusted geckos to be proven. And as far as females go, I would rather, and a lot of people, would rather purchase a female that's unproven, that hasn't been introduced to a male, so that they can pass on the genetics from the male that they select, rather than a previous male that's bred with that female. Here's a factor that could impact the pricing of a crusted gecko. Shipping. If you're in negotiations for a crusted gecko and it's going back and forth, you can always offer free shipping and maintain the price of that crusted gecko. Another price impacting factor is selling multiples. If you're selling multiple crusted geckos all in one bundle, the price of each one of those crusted geckos will usually be decreased. Let's talk about another factor, supply and demand. And I'll try not to put you to sleep on this one because I know you know all the principles of supply and demand. As we saw earlier, interest or demand is increasing on crusted geckos and pushing that price up. Eventually, supply will increase and that price will start coming back down. As well, from a supply standpoint, how many animals do you have to sell right now? The more you have to sell, the more likelihood that that price that you sell each animal at is going to come down a little bit. And if you're not willing to wait to sell your crusted geckos, that price comes down a little bit more. And if you don't have the room in your facility to keep all of these crusted geckos, that price comes down even more. Another factor, competition. You know your competitors, right? You know how many animals they're selling, right? Have they had any sales lately? Are they posting on Morph Market and Fauna Classified? How many other crusted geckos that look exactly like your crusted gecko are out there on the market competing against your crusted gecko for sales? We talked a little bit about time of the year earlier, but let's look at it at a different light. When is the best time to sell your crusted gecko at the highest price? One is the springtime when everybody's looking for a crusted gecko to pair off with one of their males or one of their females. For juveniles, it's certainly not the fall when everybody has baby crusted geckos. I mentioned earlier, springtime, especially February, when everybody's getting their tax returns and has available money to spend on crusted geckos. But again, that's not the best time of the year. The best time of the year is when the customer is ready to buy. Let's talk about customer-specific factors that impact the price of crusted geckos. And I know a lot of people don't talk about these factors or don't even consider them. Need. Make sure that you're stalking the social media posts for somebody saying something like, I'm looking for a mate to this crusted gecko or I'm looking for a red crusted gecko. When you see a post like that, make sure you pounce. Take advantage of that price spike. From an etiquette standpoint, 
don't post on that thread. Send that person a private message. Share your pictures. Share your price. How about influx of money? Watch those posts for breeders that have sold a number of crested geckos either online or at a reptile show. Drop them a line and say, hey, I don't know if you're looking, but I have this crested gecko available. Remember earlier in the video I had mentioned that we're going to go ahead and price this crested gecko? Well, let me share with you what my feeling is on the price of this crested gecko. The price is whatever somebody is willing to pay for it. I can start it off at a certain price, and if it doesn't sell, and I'm happy with it not selling for that and holding on to that crested gecko for a while, that's fine. If I sell that crested gecko immediately, that means that there was a demand and somebody's going to be a happy buyer. Here's a huge tip for everybody pricing out their crested geckos. Take emotion out of it. Follow the guidelines of this video. Know your geckos. Know crested geckos in general. Know the traits. Know the morphs. Know the important factors determining the price of these crested geckos. And do your research. Then go ahead and apply those principles to your price and know that you've done the best job that you could do. I mentioned earlier a great outlet to sell your crested geckos is at reptile shows. Let me go ahead and share a video right here of a reptile show that we recently did and how we set up for that reptile show. Thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you next video.